Welcome back to the part three of our series on basics of watercolour. I'm going to cover six different techniques. Now I'm not a big believer in getting all your techniques correct and there isn't a precise science about it. I'm going to teach you the sorts of things that I do to make the watercolours that I do. So basically I'm going to start with a wash and wash is a fundamental part of watercolour and I'm going to use cobalt blue uh, because I want it to look like a sky. Um, this is one of the common things that we do with a wash. So I'm mixing, wetting out the, the cobalt blue in the palette and then with some water I'm literally brushing it across the paper. And now sometimes I really like to get some tonal value in my skies because the sky isn't just blue. It has patches of white, lighter colours and when I'm doing sky I like to brush, use my brush across the horizontal but I also do randomly up and down, side to side so that the sky doesn't look an even blue. And here I'm just taking out a bit of colour with a drier brush. So that's the fundamentals of a wash. Next I want to um, introduce you to a graded wash and this can be like a sunset sky or uh, when you're using different colours. Now a one warning about sunsets is that in sky, um, skies are generally blue and sunsets have yellows and oranges in them but if you put blue and yellow together you'll have green and it's not usually a colour that we see in the sky. So it's very, you need to be very careful so I'm going to start with um, a darker blue, so I'm going to add some indigo to my co cobalt I'm going to add some water and my sky is going to start darker at the top and get lighter as we come further down. I'm going to add a little bit more of the cobalt so that it's a brighter blue nearer to the horizon. So that's what we call a gra graduated or graded wash. So going from a dark to a light or a light to a dark. And we could use other colours. We could have had orange in there. We could have had some red for a sunset sort of sky. And now we're going to, I'm going to have a go at doing some wax resist. Now, wax, this is just a, a, a candle. Uh, I've cut it up and I'm going to use it to make some marks on this white paper and then when I put the paint over it the paint won't end up where the wax is. There's all sorts of resist mediums but I'm just going to teach you about this one. Um, you don't have to peel it off, it stays on the paper. So basically you make the marks where you don't want the paint to be and then you paint over it. I'm going to use a dark colour because I want you to be able to see the wax resist. A bit like magic painting it is. So because we don't use white in uh, the colour white or the white paint and we allow, have to have the paper doing the white for us, wax resist can be in a simple way of protecting your white paper so that your white shows through. The next thing I want to talk about is another sort of resist and that's using uh, oil pastel. And in the same principle as using a candle, you can use coloured oil pastel uh, for mark, to make your marks, to highlight part of your picture and then use colour over the top. So you might want to use different shades of colour so that the, the oil wax, the wax in the oil pastel is resisting the paint 
and allowing the paint to land either side of it but not on the colour. It's a technique I use in mixed media work, so mixed media when I'm using some collage and different techniques for watercolour. The next one I want to talk to you about is pen and wash and I've used a permanent marker pen to draw this little very simple house and then I'm going to put a wash over the top of it. So I'm going to use a wash for a sky. Then I'm going to use different tone or value and then I'm going to use a little bit of, of orange so that basically you're just getting the outline of oh, I should have used green then let's use green you're getting the outline stays solid on your paper and you paint over it because you use permanent marker it isn't, doesn't run into the watercolour and I try to use it when I've got glass in windows I try to use some indigo because windows always look very dark and reflecting the light so I add a bit of colour too and then I might just use my bit of kitchen roll to dab out excess colour so that's pen and wash. The next thing I want to show you is glazing. Now um, when you're applying watercolour you can, I've shown you how you get tonal value, a large amount of pigment to a lesser amount of pigment by adding water. But if you want to build the density of your colour it's called glazing and I painted this earlier and it's, it's dry and now I'm going to add a denser colour over the top and we call this glazing so you might build density by this technique you can add different colours oh I need to wash my brush properly And fundamentally, in watercolour, you, you work from light to dark. So we leave our white white, the paper does that for us, and then we work through a range of tonal value from light to dark. And this is one way you can keep adding tonal value dark to your colours by glazing. Okay, so that's the end of my session on techniques, but really, just like with colour mixing, have a go, have a practice at these techniques and see how they work for you. Experiment with them, have a, have a, have a go basically, let the water do the magic and try these different techniques. So that's the end of this section, but you can watch the next part by clicking on the screen here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking here. So see you soon.